You know, one thing that I, I look at when I see Aaron, and I saw the, the, the team just pour out on the field when he hit that home run. As far as I could tell, certainly you know much better than any of us. I don't think anybody begrudged him that. And no one was jealous. Nobody, I don't think, was rooting against him. He seems like he's universally respected and adored in that clubhouse, which, you know, you've been in the game your whole life. I think that's rare for a superstar. Am I right? Yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't want to say rare, but, I mean, he is – look, every, nobody's perfect, so I don't want to, you know, you know – put him on this hill but he's he's such an awesome teammate and like you know and i've said it to you guys i've been saying it a bunch the last couple of months when people ask me about like and why i think he's was so good at handling it and dealing with it and why i say he's cut out for it is he really at his core you know just wants to be a great teammate and win and i think as a result that it really does simplify things for him and um, he lives that every day that I've known him is like, man, I'm, I'm, I want to be a great teammate. And it's it's so awesome getting to manage a player of his caliber that cares about his team as much as he does and is, and is frankly unselfish as he is when it comes to, uh, you know, the, the season and everything. And um, I just, you know, we're, we really are lucky to have him. Peter and I talked about it game one of the doubleheader on Tuesday when you know, he threw his helmet, he swung at the first pitch and four of the five at bats, and then Michael came on after the game and said it as well. That, to me, from afar, looked like the first game where it really the stress showed. Would you agree with that? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, honestly, I, just living it every single day, it just it didn't he, he, you never saw that from him so like in the there, there never seemed to be this added pressure you know yes when you get in there and obviously he wants to get it done so <clears throat> but he shows those every now and then you just you don't you're not micro it's not in a microscope as much as it is these last few weeks so he comes back to the dugout and shoves his helmet in there and he'll say something every now and then um so yeah he wanted it but honestly i even even in hindsight i don't think it was weighing on him that much yes a little bit and he wanted to get it done for everyone and you know obviously the following around and the ball change out and, and just all the hoopla around it of course he wanted to get it over with but honestly i don't think it was weighing on him that that much now, you kind of made news a couple of questions back because on the show and then on the show with John Heyman and Joel Sherman, you said that Garrett Cole was your number one starter. That was like a week and a half ago. Now you're not announcing it yet. So what has changed? Are you considering not having him as your number one starter? Well, I mean, I, I think when I said it on there, it was kind of like, you know, is he your – yeah, he, yeah. But, you know, you guys always that, – that's why you get vague answers sometimes because you want to pin us down two weeks ahead of time, a month ahead of time. I mean, the, the reality is is we got a ton of great choices now, and I feel like, you know, where Seve is, where Garrett is, where Nestor is, like I, I feel good walking into a series, like, like I said earlier, about anyone. Um you know, I, I think I know which way I want to go, but I, I, I want to at least, you know, kind of, you know, sleep on it a little bit, talk to different people, um, you know, before ultimately making a decision. And, and again, I'm leaning towards making that decision sooner rather than later so I can get these guys lined up and get them into their when they throw their sides, if they're going to throw a live, how much, and those kind of things. So I lean doing it, announcing it early. But um, but I'm also, you know, I, I want to make sure that I have the right discussions and, and sleep on it properly. Is Garrett Cole standing as your highest paid player? Does that come into play? And is does it make it tough if you say, okay, I want Nestor Cortez to start game one, where you've got to explain to the media and explain to Cole, okay, you're not the game one starter, although you're the guy. No, I, I think all our guys are on, will, are on board and will be on board, you know, with whatever way we go. Um, I think this is a 
really focused group right now. I think, um, you know, what we went through in, in the second half and in the month of August <laughs> and then really rallied there uh, in the month of September to pull away and win the division, I think we're, we're as a group um, of singular mind, and it's about winning and, and trying to win a championship and try and get 11 more wins now, and I think we're all on board with that, and I think whatever way I go, those conversations will be easy to have. And... Um, um, and I'm going to do what I think is, is best for us uh, as a team uh, moving forward. And the reality is, if we get to the end, you know, the three guys we're talking about are all going to play an enormous role. These last three games for Stanton, Aaron, is that enough of a sample size to believe he's starting to come around? I sure hope so. It's encouraging to see it. And, um, you know, the one thing about G is he does – um, you know, he, he knows what, what he needs to do. He knows where he needs to get. He knows, you know, where he was looking, you know, as far as getting himself in the best possible position to, uh, to be ready to go uh, in a few more days here. So I do feel like he's moving in a really good direction. I feel like physically he's in his, you know, continues to be in a better spot. Um, and we started to see that timing start to sink up a little bit in the last few days, which was really encouraging. He'll work really hard, um, you know, getting live looks here in these next several days. And <laughs> when he's right, um, we know, we obviously know what, what a difference maker he is. Um, and, 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 you know, he's, He's one of those guys that can change a series just with his his presence and his ability. Do you plan on starting Judge as a leadoff guy, or were you leading him off all that time to get him more bats for the home runs? Um, no, I, I, it, it got to be a little bit of both at the end, mm -hmm. um, but but in the month now, I think it kind of depends on who we all get back. Um, you know, Ben and going to be, you know, a maybe probably at best here um so you know we'll see what's all available to us as a team um but i'd probably lean him in the leadoff spot um you know it, it, depending on how many lefties i'm able to have also in the lineup Can, let, let me just um play devil's advocate on that so the bottom of your order is okay. not is not you know the offensive fulcrum of your team and when you look at the numbers and the mm -hmm. slug that Aaron Judge had, and he had 130 ribbies, it almost seems like he should have had 160 ribbies. Are you taking RBI opportunities away from him by batting him first? He's getting that extra at bat, but sometimes he's coming up with nobody on base. Yeah, I mean, you can't have it all, Michael. Yeah, but you, you want know? it all, don't you? You want it all. Uh, of course. I mean, D.J. LeMahieu was getting on at a 400 clip in the first half right. before he got injured. And it was a, he was an easy guy to lead off. We had Andrew Benatendi, who's a you know 380, 390 on base guy. That's a real leadoff option at the top. You had that benefit as well. So if all of a sudden, who do you lead off then? You know, do you you know do you put Rizzo in the leadoff spot? You know, if you put a left-handed batter in the leadoff spot, now all of a sudden, probably the next seven out of eight hitters are right-handed. Yep. So you, you have no no semblance of balance at all um you know and and the reality is if john carlos you know swinging the bat the way he, he, he we, he's starting to show and obviously the way we know and if riz and glaber torres continue you know obviously glaber's in, in such a good spot now despite missing a few games there with the illness uh, the last few days if they're swinging the bat the way they're capable of then we got something and I'll take Aaron Judge being on base for those guys a ton. Now, if if all of a sudden like a Ben and comes into play or whatever, and you're able to create some more balance, or man, I got a real leadoff option, maybe I do slip them back to second or or even third. Now, do you believe that? Um, yesterday, it was reported in the paper that after the game, Lemay looked like he was limping. Do you think he's a viable option for Tuesday, or are you worried? We'll see. We'll see. He's getting some more treatments done now through this, through these next few days. Um, so we'll see. I, I do think he's compromised. Um, you know, I, I even said that in in the game. He got two hits and a walk. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like man, he's 
he's he's compromised and you can see that um so we'll just have to you know that'll be something that we obviously see and see how the treatments go here over the next four or five days and and make a call there how about carpenter Carpenter, I think, I think is going to be an option. I, I think I, I expect him to be uh, on the roster. Um, you know, maybe not a real option in the field mm-hmm. in in the first round, um, but definitely, I think a a bullet off the bench. It, it's it's certainly trending in that direction. All right, now it's down to business. Colts getting three in Denver tonight. <sighs> this is big. You're three and one on Thursday night picks, by the way. Oh, three. Yeah. Okay, so I don't have to deal with the no hook, hook. Huh? No hook. I don't really, I don't really love this game. Uh, Taylor's out for the Colts. Yep. I'd like to think that we get some momentum going for Russell Martin and his receiving core. I lean the under in this. What's the total Russell, in this Russell game? Wilson. Russell, Russell Wilson, Wilson, Russell Martin, no. Oh, Russell Martin. Jeez. Russell no, because you're a baseball. Sorry. No, he's allowed to make that. No, no, no I'm not mad at him. No, I'm to help him out. Because he's in a baseball. Right now, he's in a baseball space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the total on this game? Can oh, I, look at that. We don't, we don't do totals over here. But he can do what he wants. It's his show. <laughs> <laughs> what is the total? I don't know. I, I can guess. So I'm going to guess 45. Yeah, I'm gonna, and half. Three and one. I was going to guess. Now I nailed it. 42. You know what? No hook. Let's go with the home team. We're taking the Broncos this week. That's what I would do if I was picking up this. One more baseball question. Uh, Did Chapman show you enough to be on the roster? We'll see. We'll see. Again, this we'll is your see. show. Gotta You've got to sure. tell everybody on your show. Yeah. You got to break news I on your show. Days, Michael, we got five. We got five days. Oh. We got five days. Are we gonna have twelve? We gonna have thirteen pitchers? You know, we got to decide on that. Are we gonna have the whole team? 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 Are we gonna have you know, over the next couple of days. But then, you know, as we get into Sunday and Monday and ne- and we know the opponent, you know, that's that's going to factor in. So I don't want to reveal anything yet because I, I, I honestly I don't know, know quite yet. All right, so let me get deep into the strategic baseball weeds here. Let's say that LeMayu is on the roster. I know you love the way Donaldson plays defense and the possibility of slug there. Mm-hmm. Glaber's been your hottest player other than Aaron Judge. And it looks like Stanton can only DH, can't play the outfield. So how would you get him in? Would he just be a pinch hitter off the bench? DJ? Yeah, DJ. Yeah, I mean, yeah, probably initially as, as, a, as a bat off the bench. It, again, it depends. It depends. Four days from now might be a lot different because we've been holding back on some treatments that, um, you know, we've been waiting on. So... I, I got to see where we're at. I mean, it could be everything from not on to on as an option off the bench to a real option as a starter. Uh, I hate to be really vague, but, like, we're days away from that, honestly. Aaron, let me ask you a question you can actually answer. Um, yeah? <laughs> what What did you say to Seve when you took him out of the game? How tough is that when, when someone's bringing stuff like that and playing that well? You could see he didn't even want to make eye contact with you. What was that conversation? <laughs> Um, yeah, it was, oh man, um, it, it was an easy decision for me because it was after the seventh inning. Had it been after the eighth inning, that's where it would have been a tough decision for me because okay. I basically said, look, and he kind of knew he was in that 90 pitch range. 90 was kind of where we were going the other day, and I think he ended up going to 94 at the end of that inning. So I'm, I, I kind of thought, I said, Seve, I, I know you want to be out there. And he goes, you know, he tells me I want to die out there. And I said, hey, we got much bigger things to come. We need you. I said, if I, if I send you out there for this and you get two more innings, we're talking about 120, 25, 130 pitches there's no way I'm letting you go there. It, you know, it, it'd be irresponsible of me to do that. So nice going. And then, you know, it, but but still, you make that decision, and the guy's throwing the way he is right there. 
it still weighs on you. And after the fact, I felt like it, man, it just kind of hurt me to do it. Um, but it was a fairly easy decision for me. And actually, I appreciated Seve swinging back by me like five minutes later and said, hey, man, I understand. Lots of and um, so I, I was appreciative of that. Um, but, yeah, anytime a guy's throwing the ball like that, it's a hard decision. But had it been the eighth inning, then it would have been a real difficult decision to me. And I would have actually probably sent him out for the ninth had it been the eighth. Mm. If you let him roll, though, I mean, his stuff was so filthy. He probably does get the no hitter. He said a thousand percent he would have. Yeah, a thousand percent. Yeah. So, yeah, that would have been like, yeah, might have, might have turned it into a perfect game at a thousand yeah well he just had that one walk he did face the minimum batters he was amazing uh will stan be able to play the he outfield was. for you i don't know i think i think there is a chance that that's in play but just with 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 not being able to do it at all um it, you know it's hard for me to think that i would you know, start them in a game out there, but, you know, as an emergency option, possibly. All right, before we finish up, people should know this. Aaron Boone's a huge sports fan, not just a manager of the Yankees. This is an unbelievable sports weekend. You've got the four wild card series. You've got your beloved USC Trojans playing. You've got your beloved Philadelphia Eagles playing. What game are you most excited about? Whew. Um... Man, that's a great question. I always go USC first. Because that's Obviously, the heart. I'm watching Cleveland and Tampa. Yeah, that's my heart. Cleveland and, and Tampa will be will be paying close attention to. But, you know, we'll be at the ballpark for a lot of these. So we'll be kind of in and out on them. And then, of course, the Eagles uh, in, in, in the desert. Uh, Kind of, kind of those orders. All right, so, order. so let's just make like a scintilla of news on your show. Who do you want to win Guardians Rays? Who would you rather play, Aaron? Are you going to tell us that? <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm always careful what you wish for. So we'll 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 get ready for whoever we got and try and put our best foot forward. No, we broke a new ground on this show, I'll tell you that. We did get the uh, the Broncos out of you, which is good. <laughs> yes, uh, but a, a good friend doesn't ask that question. <laughs> right? Right, Aaron? I can't say that. I'm going to do it What's in 24 that? hours. I said a good friend doesn't ask that question. <laughs> You know what? You know, bring me on on Monday. You know, maybe. All right, I'll, All right. I'll, give us a freebie on Monday. Up. Bring me Done. on Monday, and we'll try and reveal, you know, a lot of stuff on the show. <laughs> Beautiful. Get the cough better. Enjoy your weekend. All right, thanks, guys. Sorry, sorry to to not reveal much to well, you. You know, your, <laughs> if your show, you know, your show, it's got to get big ratings. You got to reveal stuff on it. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, thanks, Aaron. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>